Hello and welcome to YouTube channel Health Cube, the place where our mission is not only to motivate you but help you to move on to the bright side of the health. In today's video, let's talk about muscular dystrophy and how it is managed with the help of physiotherapy. Without wasting any due time, let's get started. So, before we start talking about how muscular dystrophy can be managed with the help of physiotherapy, let's first understand what is muscular dystrophy. So, muscular dystrophy is a group of genetic disorder in which due to the genetic problems, there is a progressive weakness and loss of muscle mass. The reason this problem happened is because of the abnormal genes that are present in the body interferes with the production of the protein that is required for the healthy muscle growth. The problem usually starts in childhood but have got various variants and each variants have got typical signs and symptoms. Unfortunately, there is no cure for this problem and this problem could be progressive and that's why medication and therapy is the way to work in this management of the problem. The main symptom that is associated with muscular dystrophy is the progressive muscle weakness. As the child grows, the muscles become weaker day by day. This is a very common problem in boys compared to girls and as I said, depending on different variants of the condition, the symptoms will be occurring. The most common type of muscular dystrophy is called as Duquesne muscular dystrophy where the child can observe frequent falls, difficulty in raising from lying or sitting position, difficulty in running or jumping. The child will show waddling gait. The child might walk on toes. Child may have large calf muscles. He may observe muscle pain and stiffness. He can have learning disabilities and the child can also show delayed growth. The second common variant of muscular dystrophy is called as Baker muscular dystrophy. This is milder version of Duquesne muscular dystrophy and there could be a slower and delayed progress in this problem. So the child can observe development of these all symptoms in their late teens. Majorly the symptom stays the same that is progressive muscular weakness. The child might feel it difficult to walk, to stand or to jump for a long period of time. Even getting up from chair or from bed can be difficult and sometimes even the muscles feel weak and fatigued. Apart from that, there are some other muscular dystrophies like myotonic muscular dystrophy, facio-humeral muscular dystrophy, congenital dystrophy and limb girdle dystrophy. Apart from that, there are different other types of dystrophy as well. For example, myotonic dystrophy, limb girdle dystrophy, congenital dystrophy, facial scapulohumeral dystrophy, to name a few. Now, as I mentioned that there is no cure for this problem and that's why the child has to rely on the medication at the same time therapy. And physiotherapy plays a very crucial role when it comes to management or maintaining the functional independence of the child. The key goal when it comes to management of muscular dystrophy is to retain the functional independence of the child as much as possible and make his day-to-day -day activities as simple and easy as possible. Because this is a progressive problem, we cannot expect a good strength recovery, but we can delay the progress of the problem. So what exactly we do when it comes to management of muscular dystrophy? So management of muscular dystrophy is basically categorized if we look from the goal perspective is number one to prevent the discomfort that are associated with the muscular weakness. As the child will get weaker, he will develop particular aches and pains around the body. The idea is to prevent and manage those aches and pains as much as possible. The second is to work on positions. As the muscles are weak, the child can develop poor postural habits which can compromise breathing at the same time also affect the biomechanics of the body. The idea is to retain the good postural alignment as much as possible and prevent deformities that can develop secondarily. And the third thing that we also work on is progressive exercises with the key idea to maintain functional independence. So when it comes to pain management, different methods like hot fermentation, cold pack, 
tense therapy, electrotherapy modalities are used to retain or reduce the pain levels, especially on the muscles that are easily going under spasms or are getting injured. Coming to the positioning method, very deep focus is given on maintaining different position for a brief period of time. At the same time, it is advised for the child to avoid being in one position for the long period of time as this could lead to overworking of certain group of muscles which can then get tired. So child is usually advised to move around after certain intervals. Certain positions like sitting with backrest, sitting cross leg, squatting position sitting, sleeping with knee to chest position, or else sleeping in the prone line position and sleeping on the side with the legs abducted or legs moved apart from the body are some key ways with which the body can be trained or else can be given feedback on how the ideal position feels like. Coming to the progression part, the exercise starts with basic breathing exercises because since there is a progressive muscular weakness, it is also going to compromise the breathing muscles first. As breathing muscles are not working as efficiently, what's going to happen is oxygenation of muscles will not happen well. And that's the reason deep breathing exercises are the key to retain oxygenation to these muscles. Deep breathing exercises Diaphragmatic breathing exercise and even pranayamas are some of the easy ways with which these duquet muscular dystrophy symptoms can be managed to a lot of extent. The child will also feel brief relaxation and good energy levels. Doing breathing exercise multiple times in a day have got tremendous benefits and that's why it should be done on a regular basis. Apart from breathing exercises, the another exercise that is very important for the child to do on a regular basis is the gentle range of motion exercises. The gentle range of motion exercises are beneficial as it improves the awareness of the body. At the same time, they are not very hard to do. So the stamina can be retained and maintained for a long period of time. Simple range of motion exercises like neck movements, shoulder braces, shoulder shrugging up and down, front and back are some simple examples of them. Moving forward, along with this, in a progressive way, stretching exercises are also helpful. Certain group of muscles like hamstring, adductor muscles of the thighs, calf muscles of the legs and the shoulder muscles are prone to develop tightness and they require periodical stretching. So stretching exercise on a regular basis helps in maintaining the flexibility of these muscles. And last but not the least are the strengthening exercises. Here the idea is to retain the strength of the muscle and that's why it has started with some simple, that's why it has to be started with some simple holding activities and then we need to gradually move on to more intense exercises as per the child is able to bear them. Again, doing functional training is also equally important which incorporates walking, cycling, marching at place to improve the cardiovascular endurance of the child so that he can maintain good physical functioning and well-being. So this is how a muscular dystrophy can be managed with the help of physiotherapy. I hope through this video you got a brief idea about it. In upcoming videos, we will talk about more other such conditions. So if you are interested to learn about them, make sure to subscribe to HealthQ channel. I'll see you in another video. Thank you.